call me Louis. This is my spot. Louis Pet. Welcome back. Just a quick question. Do you know the longest serving political prisoner in Robben Island? You'll be wrong if your answer was Nelson Mandela. That's because that's not true. No, there's a big difference uh, between Zuma. Zuma was on Robben Island for 10 years. Nelson Mandela was there for 18 years. And we just like to correct an historical error which says that he was on Robben Island for 27 years. That's mm -hmm. not true. In fact, the longest political prisoner in Robben Island served 27 years. Now, last week or two, we watched a video of this guy named Imam Kasim revealing the nature of ANC political prisoners at Robben Island. And in that particular interview, he named one guy Jeff Masamola, or what he was commonly known as the Tiger of Azania. The oldest serving political prisoner on Robben Island was in fact Jeff Masimula, who spent 27 years there. So he definitely was the longest uh, serving prisoner on Robben Island. One guy asked me to find out more about the guy Jeff Masamola. Believe it or not, it's almost impossible to find, but I came across just one. Thanks to this guy, Larry Flint, who made the request to this particular video. And here is what I found. So this is an opening ceremony to which the South African audience was about to be addressed by Jeff Masemola. He's the tall guy in a blue jacket. But first, here's a quick history of Brad Jeff. He joined the ANC Youth League in 1958 and months after seeing the party had no strategic intentions to totally liberate South Africa and get back their land from the colonizers, he together with a few group members broke away from the party. They objected the ANC's view of the land belongs to all who live in it, both white and black, and also rejected a multiracialist worldview, instead advocating a South Africa based on Africa nationalism. He, together with Robert Sobukwe, then co-founded the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania the following year, April in 1959, a military arm doing for the Pan-Africanist Congress. When the PSC was banned in 1961, Masemola and others were sent out of the country to set up the PSC Underground Gorilla Liberation Army. He was then abducted in Lesotho by apartheid forces. Masemola was sentenced to life imprisonment on Robben Island. Prison authorities regarded him as an instigator among the prisoners and was subjected to solitary confinement for much of his time on Robben Island. Island. Masamola spent 27 years in Robben Island. He rejected President P.W. Botas' offer to release him on a condition that he denounced the armed struggle. He equally refused to engage in any negotiations except if it was to result in the return of land to the dispossessed African majority and establishment of a free and just society. I hope this is not the first time, but there will also be occasions when I shall needs must come to this place here and have a word with you as I'm having now. And Another fortunate thing I noticed is that all these speakers who came here to address you spoke about the most important issues which I also were to touch upon. All that is left for me to do now is to underline some of the things they spoke about. And the first is about the struggle. The Pan Africanist Congress sees the struggle as clear as daylight. Struggle is about the men as it has been said before. We lived here happily before the arrival of the white people in 1652. They took the land away from us and now we want it. That is what the struggle is about. 
umzabalazo ke ngokwamehlo ale organization umzabalazo ukufumana umhlaba nje ngoko usiphanga ngo 1652 besihle luka mnandi singaphazamiseki koke emva koko ngo 1652 kwenzeka ukuba sithinezelwe nanso ke into esikusabalaza ayo ukufumana umhlaba we the members of the pan african congress in chapter the struggle as the repossession of the land of which you have been robbed by the foreigners tena singamalunga lokutho kaphoqo sisithatha isitatha esizabalazo sokujonge nje ngoba ngumzabalazo ukuba thina sifumane umhlaba wethu ubuyele ezandleni zethu nje ngoba namhlanje sihleli ngaphezu kwangu ngaphandle komhlaba usezandleni zamabhulu now many tactics have been used by the oppressors themselves by the dispossessors to dissuade us from this cause eh zinye izindlela ezithetha sebenziswa ugaba bawuthuthi bomhlaba bezama ukuba silahle amehlo ethu ulento ingundoqo ingumhlaba One of the tactics mentioned here is the encouragement of black on black violence by the oppressors. Eh enye yendlela abathebenza ngayo ngingathi yilanto abathi ezincwadini imfekane ukulwa kwabamnyama bodwa. Now what I want to underline in this respect is that we know who our enemy is. He stands right there in front of us. And yet instead of facing the enemy, we face each other and destroy each other. Into ndifuna ukuyiqhelela umntu apha yeyoba. No canje siyazi nje inimi yethu sibona imepha ya icacile. Kodwa into sawulibana heyo ukuba sileka amanye I want to remind you of the sons and daughters of, of Africa that it is the enemy, it is the usurper of your land that you must concentrate on and let not your brother and your sister here. And if you want to compose and say, I don't want to know what you have said, you don't want to know what you have said, you don't want to know what you have said, you don't want to know what you have said, you don't want to know When we were arrested in 1963 that was the question the land question sasi funa omhlaba wethu em hlasa panzwa ngo 1963 eyo lando sasi banjelwa yaye kwa ilento lo namhlanje ntetha ngayo umhlaba there is another tactic of the usurper to dissuade you away from the cause lena ke ikho enye indlela ethi lo umthathi umhlaba azame ngayo into kuba wena uyibale ngale nto yona uyifunayo ngumhlaba thousands of and thousands of african people are thrown into jail daily amawakawaka abantwana besizwe sase africa bafakwa kweza ntilongo zinyama imihlala ezo there is a form of intimidation the oppressor votes that by using such tactics eventually you will bow down on their knees before them and beg for mercy leo ke yenye ndlela yokwenza umuntu wabe ngithuthuse umoyi emoyikisa ukuba ajabuye ibe nguye oguka ngedono ekucenga another tactic the oppressor uses is that of keeping you in starvation all the time enye indlela athi ucinezela ayenze ukuba akubethe ngicathethekile imihlana ezo now if a person has been hungry for a long time and somebody comes and in this case is the oppressor and offers you a little crumb of bread break you will accept it happily today we find ourselves in this in a situation where a portion of the oppressed population here have been filled with so much money in their stomachs that they are ready to do anything which the oppressor bids them to do for 500 rand one african may toss a grenade through the window of another african for 500 rand an african may go and report another african at the police station and the poor african is arrested and sentenced to many years in prison only for this 500 men some of you will remember what robert mangali sosobuke said he was speaking about this when he gave an example and illustration of a jiggle and a dog you know the story i need not repeat it but what i shall repeat and stress here is that the jacob hungry and lean as it was was not tempted to do as the dog was doing to be chained and be given food 
the jackal said to the dog, I had rather live in poverty in my jungle than to be chained and be fed as you are. And it dates as far back as 1912. Repressed because of the actions we took against the status quo. Today, because of this experience, we feel matured to tackle the problem in other ways. But are we really mature? If one can say, let us go to the round table and discuss the fate of our land here, I don't know if that can be termed maturity. Now, these concessions may be given. It doesn't matter how many they may be, but there is only one that can never be granted, and that is the eventual taking over of this land. If that concession is given, then it would mean that during the or in the next election, the government of this land will be in the hands of the oppressed and the user. The oppressor himself has told you that this question is non-negotiable. They have over and over again said, I would like to underline this then. You will never negotiate until you reach the point where your oppressor may give you your land back. The question of negotiation involves statuses. If you are occupying a higher status and another is occupying a higher status, negotiation between the two. There cannot be cooperation between the weak and the strong, and if there is any such cooperation, then it is a misnomer to say that it is co uh, um, cooperation for collaboration underlined. When I mention these points, as I do, I want to point out one important fact, and that is the fact that in all these contexts, view has been proved to be the correct one. I challenge anyone Now, to those guys who are asking what really happened to Jeff Masemola, well, he was assassinated immediately. He was released from prison. This is because he refused to take part in the political negotiations that Nelson Mandela was part of. So they faked a car accident and that was the end of him. And he was, in fact, assassinated in what was called a motor car accident shortly after he was released. The apartheid government was so fearful of what his influence would be in South Africa, even at the point of his death, that they would later wipe out all documentation and important pieces of information that referred to him at the time, making the taste of this important piece of South African history a little difficult in this age. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, comment if you have anything to say and share. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you are new and want more videos like this. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.